Hi, it's Kate from Marvelous Videos, and today we're looking at House on Haunted Hill, the 90s horrifying horror classic that's criminally underrated, explored. There is something about insanity and asylums that horror movies love using time and time again. It's probably because the unpredictability of craziness adds to the scary quotient, and House on Haunted Hill does utilise the mental derangement cliches to great effect. The remake of William Castle's 1959 classic was burdened by heavy expectations. Starring Vincent Price and equipped with some gripping storytelling, the original movie was a showstopper. However, the remake turned out to be an impressive rework of the cult classic, and a cast of well-known faces like Jeffrey Rush and Peter Gallagher only made things better. This 1999 flick retains the essence of horror movies from the 50s, but also adds the modern touch with a mysterious narrative and some dark humour. One could argue that the CGI is dated, but the practical effects and makeup skills are terrific. It's no surprise that veteran artist Dick Smith was in charge. The House on Haunted Hill stands as one of the most criminally underrated modern horror gems, and you must experience the fun of this narrative. In this video, we will operate on the 1999 remake and the sequel that was released in 2007. Stay with us as we dive deep into the horror of the darkness, the Baphomet Idol, and fish out many more lesser known details about these films. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. What exactly happens in the house on Haunted Hill? The movie starts off with some disturbing visuals. We briefly see the horrors of the Vanicott Psychiatric Institute for the Criminally Insane. In the 1930s, the head of this once famous facility, Dr. Richard B. Vanicott, turned out to be a psycho who performed unspeakable experiments on mentally sick patients. Many were killed in the process, while others were brutalised and gored to a slow death. The film opens with a scene from one such disturbing surgery being performed on one of the patients. However, this time, some of the inmates manage to escape. They viciously attack the staff and there is absolute chaos in the hospital. They even start a dangerous fire that threatens to burn everything to the ground. But it seems like Dr. Vanneker had prepared for such an incident in advance. He had set up the facility in such a way that numerous iron gates and bars would seal it completely. These could be controlled by massive clock-like timers that would shut the building for 12 hours. During this devastating fire, he initiated the failsafe and everything was destroyed without a chance to be helped. There were attempts to reconstruct the institute, but some unexplained deaths during the process jeopardised the process. It became known as the mysterious house on Haunted Hill, and famous folklore for the town. The next scene brings us to the present day, where we are introduced to the eccentric billionaire Stephen Price. He has a carefree attitude, and he loves to live his life on the edge. We see his gimmicks when reporters are interviewing him on his new amusement park, and he pulls a stunt to scare the life out of them through a lift crash. The rides that he created would seem to have a malfunction only to prank the customers and terrify them. He takes great joy in these thrills of life. His own personal relationships are not all that perfect. His trophy wife, Evelyn, is spoiled by his riches, but their marriage is steadily disintegrating. It doesn't help that Stephen has a rather wicked sense of humour that annoys her even more. Evelyn is a fan of extravagant parties, and a TV program on the house on the haunted hill fascinates her about the place. With her birthday coming up, she wants Stephen to throw a party right there, and she even has her two-page guest list handed to him. But Stephen throws it in the shredder and creates his own list, where people would show up at the grand party on Haunted Hill. On the fateful night, five people arrive at the gathering. These include the current owner of the mansion, Watson Pritchett, who leased the house to Stephen for the night, a model named Sarah Wolfe, ex-baseball player Eddie Baker, Melissa, and Dr. Donald Blackburn. Evelyn is also there, seemingly annoyed that her guests have not been invited, and instead, strangers have been brought to the party. Who the fuck are all of you? The strange thing about the invitation is that the people who turned up were not even the ones Stephen invited. You would think they would take a lesson from the weird coincidence and leave the premises, but then we would miss out on all the fun, wouldn't we? This is when Stephen decides to go ahead with his preconceived theme for the celebration. Let the games begin. 
Whoever among the groups stays the night in this mansion and survives till the morning light will be rewarded with a million dollars. Those who won't make it will only add to the funds of the others because their payment would be distributed amongst the survivors. You die, you lose. Your check gets divvied up by those still amongst the living. Despite the lucrative offer, the owner is reluctant to stay. He insists that Stephen makes his payment quickly so that he can leave the mansion. We see him going crazy about the delay and clearly he knows something is seriously wrong with that place. The others are trying to come to terms with the horrifying situation when suddenly, the security gates in the manor are shut. Every door, window, and any possible escapeway is sealed behind bars of steel, and the people are now doomed to survive the night inside. So far, everything is fun and games for Steven. He thinks that a computer employee that he has assigned to scare everyone with traps and shocking moments caused the doors to shut. On the other hand, his wife is thinking that it's one of her husband's weird pranks, and she's fuming with the idea of spending her birthday with people she doesn't even know. Previously, in a brief interaction between the two, we learned that Evelyn hadn't been faithful in the marriage, and the two even came to try and kill each other over their married life. Now, with everyone shut inside, they just try to plan their next step in the mansion. When it's disclosed that nobody can troll the gates to be shut, they decide that their first step will be to walk down to the basement and try and open things back up. However, Pritchett warns them that it's an absolute maze down there. Stephen hands them all a gun, as if that would work against the threats they are about to face. Hilarious. Firearms this time. In such stories, the greatest act of stupidity is to wander off alone. And that is exactly what Melissa does. She becomes the first victim after she tries to explore the basement, and the spirits of the house leave her dead. We learn that the guest list was actually created by the ghosts, and they did so to include the descendants of the members of Vanicut's staff who survived in the fire all those years ago. The game for survival worsens as the horrors of the house are unleashed one by one. In between, we also witness some conspiracy games where Evelyn and Blackburn team up to eliminate Stephen. Unfortunately for them, the ploy fails and Evelyn kills Blackburn instead, with the plan to use his dead body to frame Stephen. The egotistic billionaire learns about his wife's intentions to assassinate him, and in a fit of rage he tries to kill her. This is when the scariest thing about the house is unknowingly unleashed. They disturb the system of a room that contained the darkness, a shape-shifting entity that is a combination of all of the spirits here. It's composed of the dead souls led by Dr. Vanica himself, and this entity absorbs anyone who is trapped in the facility to add to the spirits. This being was somehow imprisoned in an abandoned room in the basement. The only way to enter this room was through a short tunnel, and if the ambience of the chamber were disturbed in any manner, the darkness would be released. When workers were reconstructing the facility, some of them realised the deep secrets of the room, and they created a wall of concrete just to conceal the tunnel that led there. Maybe these workers were killed before they could complete the wall. Or maybe the darkness simply smashed through it, leaving a gaping hole in the structure. When Stephen pushed Evelyn through the decaying door in the room, the darkness was unleashed and it assimilated her. We see her struggle briefly and then her soul is sucked into the darkness. This entity can seep through the tiniest of gaps, but outside the mansion, it's powerless. Stephen stands witness to what just happened, and he runs upstairs being chased by the darkness. It reveals that the souls comprising the darkness will kill everyone who is responsible for their condition. As this all happens, Eddie, Sarah, and Pritchett are desperately trying to open an iron gate covering the windows. They hear Stephen screaming and Pritchett goes to check on him. Just as he is on the other side of the door, Stephen opens it and jumps out of the way. The darkness consumes Pritchett and flows yonder. They understand that Pritchett was right all along, and the house is actually alive in a way. Pritchett was right. The house is alive. Now that it's killed everyone except the three, they plan to escape through the attic. Stephen takes the lead, and we see shreds of accountability and responsibility that have been lacking in his character so far. He runs ahead trying to find the way, and the darkness follows them. It takes the form of Melissa to La Sarah, but Stephen manages to activate a pulley that opens a window in the attic. So much for a PhD in engineering. The darkness tries to sever the rope that keeps the gate open, and Eddie attempts to get Sarah alongside. Just as the darkness is about to kill her, 
Stephen sacrifices his own life so that she can get away. Although she manages to escape, Eddie is not so lucky and is confronted by the darkness. It charges him for the actions of his ancestors and Eddie reveals that he was merely adopted. Upon hearing this, Pritchett's spirit appears and frees him. He even opens the iron gate that allows Sarah to pull him out, just as the darkness is almost on him. They barely get outside when the door slams shut and they stare into the sun in absolute exhaustion. As they comprehend what just happened to them throughout the night, we see five checks for one million dollars being slid into the gate. They realise that they have won a fortune. And now, the only concern is how to get down because they've escaped from an attic that is hundreds of feet above the ground. The history of the notorious house and the Baphomet idol. So what is the deep dark secret of the haunted mansion? Well, as we said, it served as the Vanica Psychiatric Institute for the criminally insane and is located along the coast of Los Angeles. It was built by the grandfather of Watson Pritchett and Dr. Vanica was in charge of the proceedings. He was a genius physician and a strong humanitarian who loved traveling all over the world. He also had a hobby of collecting art because he thought of it as therapeutic. It's during one of these travels that he comes across the Baphomet idol and his evil powers corrupted him. The Baphomet idol was placed inside the house and this cursed deity tainted everyone with its evil. Dr. Vanneker himself hid this statue in a secret chamber and this is what drove him to conduct his gruesome experiments where he tortured the patients. He performed ruthless activities such as electrotherapy, hydrotherapy and even cremating them alive. When the inmates of the facility fought back, Dr. Vanneker activated the door sealing mechanism of the mansion. He was cut open by the inmates, but he ensured that nobody would get out of this alive. All of the individuals inside were trapped and the fire engulfed everything, leaving only five of his staff living. Due to the presence of the Baphomet idol, the souls of all of those killed in the chaos, including Dr. Vanneker, remained trapped in the mansion. In a way, they were merely pawns in the hands of the dreaded deity that made them do all the killing for it. Anybody who entered the abandoned facility was doomed. There had been attempts to reconstruct, but they never ended too well, with some of the workers being killed by the evil spirits in the residency. The power of the phantoms is evident from how they hacked into Steven's computer and reworked the guest list, choosing people they wanted to punish. However, one guest that was secretly invited by Evelyn was left unchanged. <laughs> Return to House on Haunted Hill Not every brilliant movie has an exciting sequel, and many horror fans were left disappointed with a dull effort in the 2007 follow-up of House on Haunted Hill. Do you remember Sarah, the lady who survived the ordeal in the first movie? This story revolves around her sister, Ariel. After the horrifying events from before, the mansion has once again been left abandoned. Sarah tried telling everyone what exactly happened to the others, and she told them all about the phantom that murdered everybody in the manor. Unfortunately, nobody was willing to buy her ridiculous narrative. Dejected and traumatised, she kills herself, and her sister Ariel takes it upon herself to find the real cause behind her sister's suicide. She comes across the diary of Dr. Vanneker, and it sheds light on a lot of things that were a mystery to her so far. Ariel learns about the notorious past of the haunted mansion, but out of nowhere, she and her boyfriend Paul are kidnapped by an illegal art dealer named Desmond. It turns out that Desmond also has a fair idea about the chateau, and he is after the prized antique piece of art that is still somewhere inside the building, the Baphomet idol. You're after the Baphomet statue. Bingo, give that girl a prize. <laughs> he knows all about this figurine of the demon Baphomet, and he wants it in his possession by any means necessary. Ariel finds out that her sister did not kill herself, but was murdered by Desmond. She is forced to help him, and accompanied by Haru and four other henchmen working for Desmond, they step into the place one more time. Paul is held ransom by one of his thugs, and they wait outside to be the protection that will force Ariel to comply. 
Once inside, they come face to face with Dr. Hammer and his accomplices, Michelle and Kyle. Desmond happens to be an old student of Dr. Hammer, and the latter was lured into the mansion by Michelle. Michelle, what the hell's going on here? All of a sudden, we hear the same old dreaded sound, the sound of the facility being sealed shut. The master lock has been activated, but Desmond's men shoot at the system to stop the process. They have a fair idea that the idol is somewhere in the basement, and they split up to look for it. When will people ever understand that splitting up is the worst idea ever in a ghostly building? Two of the henchmen, Harry and Warren, head off alone, and soon Warren is dead. He is sucked into one of the walls by the spirits and Haru is seduced by some lesbian ghosts. Later, Dr. Vanneker does the trick by slicing her face off with a scalpel. Ariel, who is being accompanied by Desmond, is dragged into one of the padded cells and is traumatised by the visions of the horrifying things that happen there. She learns about Vanekut's reign of terror in the worst possible way, witnessing what the inmates had to go through. The ghost that makes her experience the terrifying actions reveals that he was the one who led the revolt against the unspeakable torture. We also get to know about the true power of the Baphomet idol. The spirits individually have no will to kill, but the idol makes them do its bidding. Ariel is rendered unconscious, and by the time she wakes up, she finds herself in a straitjacket and screams for help. Her cries are heard by Desmond and Dr. Hammer and they rush to rescue her from the room. The next scene points to the entrance hall of the facility, and we watch Norris, one of the henchmen, being dismembered by the spirits. They hear the locking mechanism sealing the facility shut one more time. And this time, Ariel manages to rush outside before it closes. But a nasty surprise awaits her. She discovers that Paul has entered the mansion, apparently on the orders of Desmond, although he denies giving any such orders. She gets back inside one more time and happens upon Desmond discussing their plans ahead. In the meantime, another of his thugs, Samuel, is slaughtered by Dr. Vanneker's evil spirit. It's absolute chaos, and Desmond and Michelle are disarmed in the situation. Dr. Hammer, Ariel, Paul, and Kyle seize them, and now they try to escape the building for good. They attempt to seek out various paths, and one of them leads to the hydrotherapy room that is filled with water. Desmond tricks Kyle into falling in the pool of water, and despite Ariel's efforts, he is killed by the spirits that died in the pool. She barely manages to get out with the help of Dr. Hammer and Paul, who send a chain down for her to climb out. All this while Desmond and Michelle try to look for the idol themselves, and the moment she falls behind, Dr. Vanneker kills her. Desmond seems unperturbed and continues the search by himself. Ariel and her companions find another possible escape route through the sewers, but the pathway is way too narrow for someone to pass through. Suddenly, the rebellious spirit provides her with yet another vision, revealing the location of the Baphomet idol. It's hidden behind an oven in the crematorium, and if they are to free themselves and the spirits trapped in the mansion, they must destroy it. You destroy it, you break path and it's hold. It's the only way to defeat- They head to the crematorium and locate the idol along with the heart of the house. This place is composed of living flesh and is absolutely hellish. They shoot at the figurine but it proves to be indestructible. If we can't destroy the statue then maybe there's another way. They are ambushed by Desmond but because the idol was threatened, the protective spirits attack and kill him. He is pushed into a furnace and burned alive. Ariel tries to flush down the idol to save Paul, but we see the true colours of Dr. Hammer when he tries to grab the idol and strangle her. Dr. Vanneke interrupts their struggle and kills Dr. Hammer, and this allows Ariel precious time to toss the idol into the sewer. Immediately, many of the spirits leave the mansion and several others attack Dr. Vanneke. He is torn apart, and Paul and Ariel are saved. However, as they leave the building, we are drawn to a shocking realisation. The evil power of the Baphomet idol has now been removed from the confines of the mansion into the world. The post credit scene shows a young couple about to make love on a beach. 
suddenly the woman feels something hard under the sand and they uncover the idol. A couple starts contemplating the money they can make by selling this antique piece of art to some museum. But we know the horrors that will befall them. They're all here. Everyone who's died. Everyone who's responsible. Our take on the movies. The 1999 movie is a promising attempt to remake a classic. It's a terrifying narrative that is surely scarier than what the trailers might suggest. After a minimal character setup, we are brought straight into the plot that bursts from the intense build-up. The direction by William Malone, the acting performances by veteran actors like Jeffrey Rush, and the gripping story will hold your attention throughout. The dark humour amidst the scares is riveting, and we love the practical effects that make the scary scenes stand out. It's beyond us why such an amazing movie received moderate reviews, and never got the popularity it deserved. However, we cannot say the same for the sequel in 2007. It's a hasty attempt to create horror, and the loopholes in the plot are far too glaring. They seem to completely forget that there were not one, but two survivors in the first movie. While it's not a fitting follow-up, we certainly recommend it for those seeking cheap thrills. The original and the 99 remake, however, are a must-watch for every horror fan. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe!